Antigua unwilling to pay the price for Barbados' Liat shares. And in sport, West Indies A record their second defeat in four days to India A. I'm Ricard Robertson. This is Caribbean Intent for Monday, July 15, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Coming up. Draw acts, influential players, all making moves during Caribbean Week New York. A familiar scenario for hotel icon Sir Royce and Hopkin. When it comes to Barbados tourism, it's win-win for everyone. Cultural entertainment, fashion, music. It's all next on Caribbean Passport on this station. Well, the Arab League has had a meeting in which they came out very strongly against Iran. They, uh, in fact, the head of the Arab League uh, said, uh, Iran, it's time to turn back, my brother, and change course. Uh, they are very concerned with Iran's behavior, both because threatening the Straits of Hormuz threatens their business, the oil business, And Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown says his government is not willing to pay an estimated 44 million US dollar being asked by Barbados for its shares in regional airline Liat. The two countries have been holding discussions on the acquisition of the Barbados shares. And last week, Brown told CMC News the talks were still ongoing despite media reports in Bridgetown that they had broken down. Now, speaking on a local radio program yesterday, he said if the country had to settle at the asking price, it would be a steal for Barbados. And we are not in the process of giving away money. We're in the process of creating value and to get fair value for the people of Antigua and Barbuda. So as far as I am concerned, and I've said this you know, to the Prime Minister Barbuda, so she knows my thinking, to her the discussions cannot start at 44 million US. So she knows the position and she has since come down. Uh, now I can't go any further. Brown said he was disappointed that the negotiating team would have contemplated agreeing to the US $44 million deal. He said he's looking forward to an amicable settlement, but in the event that doesn't happen, Antigua and Barbuda will invest directly in the airline. And my colleagues will tell you that too, was always my first option. The issue though about buying um, Barbados' shares came about as a result of an impasse in which Barbados said it could not go any further, sell the planes. We said, hey, look, they cannot be a successful shrinking yet. We do not accept that. If that's the case, then let's negotiate and we will buy out not all, some of the shares. And they said they will sell up to 90% of the shares. If we are unable to come to a, a satisfactory compromise, then we will just put in our money and buy new shares. And we can still get a, man a majority position, which is not necessarily what we're fighting for. We in other news now, the executive director of Jamaica's leading anti-corruption watchdog, National Integrity Action, says parliamentarians who fail to file statutory returns should not be allowed to run in the next general election. Now speaking on an RJR radio program, Professor Trevor Munro said a number of political representatives have been breaching the law by failing to submit statutory declarations detailing their assets and income. And he argued that barring them from elections could be a remedy. I would certainly think that that would be an appropriate sanction. But what it would require is an amendment to the Representation of the People Act and also I would think to the Political Ombudsman's Act that would require satisfactory compliance with relevant law. And obviously the Integrity Commission Act would be relevant law as one condition for being legitimately accepted as a candidate in the election. Summaries of their statutory declaration, which would summarize their income, summarize their assets, summarize their liabilities, should be published. But there's not a word of that in the report. The public is entitled to ask, and I'm asking, when will it be that the summaries of those two will be provided, will be published in accordance with Section 42.3b of the law? And Former Barbados Central Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell is urging regional countries to seriously consider using the United States dollar as their national cu currency. He says that while Caribbean cu currencies served a crucial purpose when they were first introduced, 
they have now become a nuisance in today's digitalized world. Now, the economists argued that the present world of commerce and finance bears no resemblance to the world for which Caribbean currencies were devised. Now, writing in the July edition of his monthly economic newsletters, Worrell also responded to the question which he says always surfaces when he calls for the retirement of all Caribbean currencies, the question of national sovereignty. He said that while most people seem to believe that sovereignty is lost with local currencies are retired, uh, replacing domestic currency and deposits with U.S. currency and deposits actually gives everyone in the country wider access to goods and services as he noted that the U.S. dollar is sovereign in, inter in international transactions. And stay with us. Your Midday Sport is next. Raymond Reefer's defiant half-century went in vain as West Indies A produced another inept batting display to slip to the second defeat in four days to India A yesterday. In pursuit of 256 at the Vivian Richards Cricket Ground, West Indies A slumped to 190 all-out in the 44th over to lose by 65 runs and fall behind 2-0 in the five one-day match series. Stuttering on 108 for 7 in the 30th over, Reefer promoted to number 3, stroked a top score of 71 to rescue some pride for the hosts. Tail ender Romario Shepard hit an, un an accomplished unbeaten 34, while Sunil Abris got 24, but the Windies A top order field once again in a spineless display. The innings was wrecked by fast bowler Navdeep Saini, who claimed 5 for 46, while leg spinner Rahul Chahar supported with 2 for 47. And Barbadian fast bowler Jofra Archer completed his fairy tale arrival in international cricket yesterday, bowling a dramatic super over as England won their first ever World Cup by defeating New Zealand in a sensational finish at Lords. Asked to bowl the decisive nerve jangling over after the scores were tied at 241 in the 2019 final, the 24 year old who made his England debut just two months ago remarkably held his nerve to deliver for his adopted country. A wide, it is a wide. It's a freebie for New Zealand, number one again. Perfect Yorker. They've got to get two. Guptill will get back. He's quick enough. Ah, he's got it. It's huge. It's gone. It's out of the park. Here's Archer again. Nisham gets him again. Will they go for two? Guptill says yes, a misfield. More pressure. Nisham on strike. He's hit another gap. Guptill will come back. Don't worry about that. I've gone to the wrong end. Guptill was always going to make it. It's going to be on Martin Guptill. It's going to be on Martin Guptill. Two to win. Guptill's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's got to throw. It's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it. England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins. And that's Caribbean. Intent. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Good afternoon.